Good morning, good morning. We're going to start off our Thursday morning with John 14, 1 through 14. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how could we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, so why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me and does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. You can ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So today, Jesus is revealing himself as the way, the truth, and the life. Um, it's only through Jesus that we come to the Father, and he makes that really clear here. There is no other way. We live in a culture where we want to say, you know, you can get to God through this religion, that religion. You can do this, and you can do that. But Jesus makes it perfectly clear. There is only one way, and it's him. And this isn't a popular statement because it's that narrow road. But, you know, we're, we're told that people, a lot of people are going to choose that broad road. Only a few will take the narrow way. This is the narrow way that's going to lead to life um, because it's about following Jesus, and that's not an easy task. Um, I wanted to look a little more at this passage because, yes, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And because we know him as our Lord and Savior, we have some promises in this passage that I wanted to pull out. So um, at the very beginning, he tells us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Why? Because you can trust in God and trust in me because we have faith in God and we have faith in Jesus. We don't have to let our, we don't have to be troubled and stressed out about things. And I know how hard that is. The last couple of weeks have been really hard for me to keep from getting stressed out or staying stressed out. I won't say getting stressed out because I've definitely carried, had a lot of stress. Um, but God keeps calling me to him. Just trust me. Just trust me. Rest in me and trust me in the season. Um, so when we're facing those struggles and those trials and those decision-making moments in our lives that we may feel like are life-defining for us, we don't have to let our hearts be troubled. We can have the peace of God that passes understanding because we can put our faith in Jesus and knowing that, you know, he has got this. Um, he is who he says he is. He is the way, the truth, and life. And he will reveal the path or the plan or the resolution. Whatever it is we're seeking can be found in him. Um, so because he is the way, the truth, and the life, we don't have to be stressed out. Um, the other side of that, if you go all the way down to the end, he says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So whatever it is that's stressing us out that we have need of, the answer lies in Jesus. So if we put our faith in him, then we can easily stop stressing and just go to him and let him give us the answer or show us the way or provide the means for us because he is the way, the truth, and the life. We're going to talk a little more about that in a moment. Um, the other... That was the other point that I wanted to bring out. He says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it to bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask anything in my name and I will do it. And these verses, I mean, like a lot of the time people read that and they're like, okay, so I'm a Christian, so all I've got to do is pray. And, you know, in Jesus name, 
I want this and I want that and, and I'll, but that's not the case, guys, okay? So you have to look at the verse and look at it in the context of who he's talking to. He's not talking to, like, all the population that followed him. He's not talking to the people who show up for synagogue on Sunday morning, you know, that are at the temple. He was talking to his disciples. He's talking to the people who had committed their lives to him and who were following him. Not just to anyone. Uh, he's not saying, you know, you can, hey, you make your wish list. I'm over here to grant wishes today. And that's the way a lot of people want to take this passage is, you know, I, so I want a new car. So you said I could ask for anything. So give me a new car. Well, that might not be God's plan for your life. Okay. And that might not be according to his will. So in order for that verse to be a promise for your life, you have to be a follower. You have to be a disciple. So what does that mean to be a disciple? In Mark 8, 34, we're told, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself, let him take up his cross and then come after me. So while salvation is free, being a disciple of Jesus is going to cost you something because he says, you've got to deny yourself. So if you're denying yourself, I'm sorry, guys, Jesus doesn't need a new car. Okay. If you're asking for a new car, that's because that's something that you want. That's not about denying self. Um, take up your cross and follow me. So whenever we're walking as a disciple, following after Jesus, we're not going to be seeking personal pleasures when we're asking God to hold him accountable or call on him for this promise that he has made that you can ask for anything in my name. Um, you can ask for anything in his name because you're his disciple. And as his disciple, you're going to be denying yourself, taking up your cross and following him. That old self is gone and that new self has come. So your desires are going to be for the things of God. So when he says, you can ask anything in my name and I will do it, he's saying, you can ask me to heal the sick and I will do it. You can ask me you know, to cast out that demon and I will do it, to send that demon out and I will do it. You can ask me you know, to meet you where you're at and give you peace and I will do it. You can ask me to provide protection for you as you go and I will do it. It has to be according to his will not our wants. And that's where a lot of people get messed up on this. And that's really not even part of the, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But when we come to Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, it's about becoming his disciple, which means it's about surrendering who we are to who he is and making our desires his desires. So in our lives is so often about what I want and we're thinking in the natural, in the flesh. And Jesus is calling us to start lining our natural lives up with him so that what we're desiring and wanting in the natural is what he wants to see happening in the natural, which ultimately is for people to come to know him as their personal Lord and Savior. So today I pray and ask that God will lead you. He will bless you. He will show you that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That he is the only way to come to the Father. And that you'll be open to that and open to letting God show you his purpose in your life. And letting you show you, sorry, I'm going to rephrase that. Let God show you what it is that you need to lay down, that you need to deny yourself. So you can take up your cross and follow him today. Daddy God, thank you that you sent your son to be the way, the truth, and the life. The only way, the only truth, and the only life that we should seek. I pray, Lord, that each person listening today, Lord, would come to know you as the way, the truth, and the life, Lord, that through Jesus they come to see that there is no way to come to you but through him. And Lord, that in coming to him as not just a, not just a seeker and not just wanting that insurance that they're not going to hell, but wanting to be his follower and his disciple, 
Lord, that he moves in their lives and he changes them and he gives them power to walk out the faith that he's given them. Lord, I pray blessings on each person that's taken the time to listen and watch today or whenever they are watching the video. Lord, I pray that you pour your blessings on them, that you place hedges of protections around them, and that you begin to move in their hearts and change their lives for all of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, have an amazing day, and I will see some of you tonight.